Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to take a look at an interesting word prom that has to deal with sound. So those of you out there that like science will see the connection between mathematics and science. Of course, math is the language of science. So if you're taking a course like physics or physical science, I think you'll uh, find this particular prom interesting. But uh, let's go ahead and read the problem. It's a little bit long. Let me kind of scroll down here so we can see the entire thing. Okay, so it says sound waves from a hammer striking a nail travel at 1,000 feet per second. So what we want to do here is find an equation of the set of points you would hear the sound after one half a uh, second uh, after the nail was struck. So, of course, this is, uh, you know, an interesting problem. It may not be so obvious what to do, but like any math word problem or science problem for that, you have to stop it and think about it, okay? And I want to kind of uh, encourage you to not just be like, oh, I, don't, I have no idea, um, you know, how to do this particular problem. Well, I want you to think about how sound travels. Now, how would you think about that? Well, maybe uh, consider what happens when you throw a little, like, uh, rock into a pond or a little bit of uh, water. What happens with that sound? How does it travel? That's a little bit of a hint. But of course, uh, I don't want to give you too many hints because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. So if you think you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, we're going to walk through the solution step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you find it just interesting or exciting, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'll read the problem here in a second, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, the question is, find an equation that represents um, the set of points where we would hear the sound at, uh, after one half second after the nail was struck. What is that equation? Well, this is it right here. X squared plus Y squared is equal to 250,000. Now, some of you out there might be like, I have no idea how you got this. Well, if that is your response, uh, you're going to be pleasantly surprised to see that, you know what, this problem is not as bad as you might think it is. But if you actually got this correct, well, that is very impressive. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A++. I'm going to give you like 150% and multiple, multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you conquered a math word problem that had to deal with sound. They'll be so impressed to hear that information. Who knows? It might even take you out to lunch or dinner. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this again. Uh, this is the answer. But before we start uh, getting into this, what, what type of equation is this? Okay, x squared plus y squared equals some number here. Well, let me go ahead and give you a bit of a hint. What we're talking about here has to deal with something called conic sections. Okay, you're like saying conic sections. What are you talking about? Well, I'm trying to, trying to sketch out a cone here. So this is a cone. Now, it's kind of a poor uh, sketch of a cone, but anyways... If we kind of imagine this was a uh, cone and the bottom, the base of that cone, and you can kind of think of like an ice cream cone, this uh, shape would be what? Now, I'm kind of drawing this three-dimensional, but this bottom, uh, the base of this would be what we would call a circle, okay? So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, a, a topic in mathematics called conic sections, okay? conic sections, and it kind of falls under the category of something called analytic geometry, uh, which is geometry that is described with equations, you know, all these fancy sounding uh, terms in mathematics. But anyways, I think this little basic concept will help you out. So uh, at least in terms of uh, reviewing um, what we call conic sections. So conic sections are sections that we can, uh, or shapes we could get if we take a cone and we kind of slice it in different ways. So the base of the cone would be a what? Well, it would be a circle shape. All right, now what happens if we kind of maybe slice the cone like this way? 
okay? Like uh, kind of not all the way down here, not all the way, all the way down over here, but what we would get is this kind of shape right there. That's called an ellipse. And then if we uh, slice it like down uh, along kind of parallel to the base right here, we would get something that look like would look like this. Let me see if I can use a different color. And that would be like a parabola. And then you can get with something called a hyperbola, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to get too deep into this um, uh, topic here. But for those of you out there that might be taking more advanced math, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, you're definitely going to have to study conic sections and equations for circles and that's what we're talking about here we're talking about the equation of a circle which is um, kind of a subset of uh, conic sections so anyways if you're like hey where do I learn this in math you know in my math class where would I learn this well you would again learn this under analytical geometry uh, and or conic sections all right so now with that being said let's go ahead and get into this problem so here's the problem Again, we have some sound waves that are emanating from this hammer striking a nail, and sound, of course, travels at a certain speed. Okay, now how fast it travels has to deal with a lot of different things. Um, although, obviously, I have a uh, math background, right? That I'm a degree in mathematics, a master's degree. Uh, for somebody out there that may not know, and how I don't even I don't know how you would know this unless I would tell you. I also have an engineering background. Okay, I've done quite a bit of engineering in my life as well. Uh, of course, if you know math and you can you know understand physics and apply that mathematics. But anyways, sound travels. Um, uh, you know, there's a certain speed of sound, and it all depends upon you know uh, the median you're at and the uh, you know, how your altitude, for example, right, if you're at sea level or if you're higher, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of factors that would affect the speed of sound. But again, what we want to do here is find an equation of the set of points that we would hear the sound at one half second. Now, we we're already told how fast this sound is traveling after the hammer strikes the nail. It's going a thousand feet per second. But let's get some sort of model, right? So um, again, you know, before you start this, you need to have some basic concept of sound. And by the way, let me just say here too, when it comes to any math or a problem, I like to kind of use the rule of three, i.e. you read the problem at least a minimum of three times before you kind of, you know, try to answer it. So, you know, one, read the problem. Uh, that's the first time just to get your bearings. The second time, you know, really start picking up uh, specific information, try to build a more detailed picture of what's going on. And the third um, time you read the problem, you need to understand the question. And this question here is we need to find an equation. Uh, so we're looking for an equation that uh, represents the set of points we would hear the sound uh, at one half second. So obviously, if you don't understand the problem, if you don't understand the question, there's no way you're going to be able to figure this out. But let's go ahead and think about how sound travels. All right, so just kind of a real basic sketch here. So I said in the beginning, I kind of gave you a hint, if you throw a rock like into a nice tranquil pond, how does uh, sound travel? Well, you can kind of get a good idea by thinking about how waves travel, okay? So like in a pond, you know, you throw this rock in, you see these kind of waves. They're basically circles. Okay, this is my little 3D picture here. So they're kind of going out in all these directions, right? You see the waves going out this way, this way, this way. Everyone is throwing a little pebble or rock into a nice little pond. You get the idea. So you kind of think about how that, how waves travel. Well, sound is in fact a wave it's, uh, itself. So here we can kind of just conceptualize this point right here in the center would be where our little nail and our hammer here, right? Boom, the uh, hammer hits a nail, boom. What happens? Well, sound is emanating, right? So here, these would be sound waves. They're kind of going all uh, over here. So if someone is over here or someone is over here, they're going to hear that sound coming at them from this uh, nail strike, right? It's going to go out this way, this way, this way. So these rings are kind of like sound waves. And how fast are these rings traveling out? Well, the problem says they're traveling at 1,000 feet per second. But the main idea here is that you understand that sound is traveling in circular uh, waves that are emanating from that point. Okay, And this uh, uh, particular point is the location of where the hammer hit the, uh, um, the top of that nail, right? Struck that nail. So 
again, you need to understand uh, the kind of, uh, you know, the geometry of what's going on. We're dealing with a circle. So if you're saying, okay, well, this sound is going out a thousand feet per second. The problem is asking what? Well, it's asking for an equation of the set of points that you would hear the sound at one half second. So if you kind of just think down here, well, here, let's say this is at one second, you're a thousand feet out, right? A thousand feet per second. So these people, it would take one second if they're a thousand feet away to hear that sound. So a half second, you're going to be like, let's say over here. So the set of points would be all these points, this like inner ring right here. Okay. So the set of points around this particular uh, fixed location, we're dealing with a circle. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, model that you need to be thinking about in order to solve this problem. Okay. So let's go and take this a step further here. So uh, the next thing you need to know is to understand the basic equation for a circle. So here it is right here. This is a circle whose center is at the origin, i.e. at zero, zero. Now, if the center of the circle was in, was in another location, like over here, well, then, you know, this equation just gets kind of modified a bit. But this is a basic equation for a circle. It's x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And this x and y are referring to uh, x, y coordinates that are on the circle itself. Okay, so right here, this is a point that's on a circle. This one, this one, this one. This is the collection or the set of all the points around this fixed point right here. So again, we're kind of getting into a more technical definition of what a circle is, but that's okay as long as you understand that there's a set of points. And this would be, again, like a representation of our sound wave here at like one half second. Okay, one half second of travel. If the sound just stopped, Okay, it's going to be at a certain ring here. Okay, but the main idea is that it's going to be uh, a certain distance away from from the center of that strike. Okay, this is where the nail uh, or the hammer struck the nail. So this distance right here is the radius. Okay, so that is what we really need here. The radius is the distance away from the hammer in this particular uh, problem. Okay. So hopefully you're starting to kind of see a picture here, but all we need to do in order to write the equation of a circle is to just know what the radius is. Okay, so if I have x squared plus y squared and I know what the radius is, let's say the radius was uh, 2, well, I would just write that as 2 squared, okay, or my uh, final equation would be x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared or 4. So this would be the equation of a circle. Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, has a, uh, that's a circle with a radius of 2. All right, so hopefully this makes sense, and if this makes sense, then let's go ahead and uh, put all the pieces together and finally solve this problem. All right, so sound waves from a hammer striking uh, travel at 1,000 feet per second. So what do we need to know here? Well, the sound is traveling at 1,000 feet per second, but we want to know the set of points that we would hear after one half second, okay? So that means that the sound went 500 feet, all right? So if it goes at uh, 1,000 feet in one second, right, 1,000 feet per one second, uh, how far did that sound go in one half second? Well, it would just be half of 1,000, so that's 500 feet. So the sound went 500 feet in one half second. So how can we uh, write an equation that represents the set of all points you would hear the sound at one half second, easy. We would just go ahead and think of it as a circle here. So here is our radius. It's 500 feet, right? That's the, at one half second, that's how far the sound went uh, out. And here the yellow circle is a representation of, of the sound uh, waves, a set of all sound that's going on right here. So someone at 500 feet away would, be, uh, would hear the sound at this moment in time. So now what we want to do is simply write an equation of this circle that has a radius of 500 feet. So let's going to do that right now. So here it is. Here is our uh, circle equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We have a radius of 500. All we simply have to do is to plug in that 500 here for r squared. So let's going to do that. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. R is 500 or 500 squared. 500 times 500 is 250,000. So this is the final equation. Okay, so hopefully you understand this. 
And again, you know, um, you know, when it comes to science and engineering and physics, for those of you who have not taken, uh, taken physics, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, taking physics. Physics is such an awesome course, but to really enjoy and understand physics, uh, which is basically the science of like things like engineering and whatnot, uh, you have to be strong in mathematics. So if you like math, but you're like, you know, I want to, you know, uh, uh, apply this to different kind of real world applications, I would definitely encourage you to take courses like physics and physics courses like that. Um, all depend. There's different types of courses, like physics courses. Um, you can have calculus-based physics for those of you out there that have uh, will complete calculus. Then you take physics that uses the language of calculus, which is obviously advanced mathematics. But you don't have to have calculus. Uh, you don't have to know calculus to take physics. You can take like a high school level physics course, a non-calculus-based physics course, so you can understand the principles of electromagnetism, kinetics, and all this kind of good stuff. So it's really cool uh, to be able to apply math and in interesting problems like this because we're learning about science as well. Okay, so if you need help with this kind of level of math, we're talking about like conic sections and things like that, check out my um, pre-calculus course. That would uh, definitely um, help you out with this kind of, um, you know, level of mathematics that we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, equations of circles, parabolas, you know, a little bit more advanced level. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.